Hi everyone, this is Cherie from 12 by 12 Cardstock Shop, and today I'm doing a file from MarjorieAndDesigns.com called Franklin Loves Fall. I chose the bear Franklin sitting on the pumpkin, and the small little stump that goes, the stem that goes on the pumpkin, the smaller pumpkin, I cut out in the color chocolate by American Crafts, and I used Catherine Pooler inks today, and the color I went over the stem with was over coffee. Now, this here is the Swiss Dots. It's the only textured paper I used, and it's just the orange Swiss Dots. You can type in Swiss Dots on 12 by 12 cardstock shop, and it'll pull up an array of colors for you guys. I didn't want my pumpkin to be plain, and I didn't want to grab out my embossing folders and I thought what better way to use my Swiss Dots paper because that was one of the reasons I bought it was for the middle of sunflowers and my pumpkins. So the only piece you need to completely ink if you choose to ink or chalk is that skinny middle piece. The other ones you don't have to do all the divots, the indentations in the middle because it's going to be covered by the layers. The biggest piece that I have in my hand is the base, and I just went around just the outer part of the sides. This is the pumpkin that Franklin is holding, and I did go around it completely just to make sure that it was inked. Now, with the inks, they do dry lighter. Sometimes I do put a few applications on till I get it my desired darkness or saturation of ink um, and so I won't piece them right away I wait for them to completely dry before I do in case I have to go back over and touch up anything I only use Catherine Pooler or Memento inks Memento inks you can find on 12 by 12 cardstock shop now these are his inner ear pads that's the color blush and I went around it with Catherine Pooler's do si do and this is a Memento ink it's peanut brittle and that's what I use for the muzzle on all of my Franklin Bears, and that color is sand. You can find it as well on 12 by 12 Cardstock Shop. There's a search bar for all the colors that I use today. And on my page, I do put the swatch and the colors that I use for each project. If you guys wanna help it out or check it out. And it also has the link to help you guys out for the piece um, that I'm working on. I have my page on Facebook and YouTube videos, Paper Pieces and Leftovers. Now that yellow cardstock is Mustard by American Crafts, and the color ink that I'm using is Sauna. I just think that it goes very well with the depth and definition of the yellow because it's almost like a yellow-brown color, and it makes it where the yellow doesn't kind of just fade away. I work on a glass mat, that way I save ink. I hate waste, it's just one of the things that I don't like. And I don't ink on paper, I used to, and I realized how much ink and chalk that I was wasting. And that's why I went to the glass mat. Now this color that I'm using of ink is Mardi Gras on the cardstock color Emerald. And you'll see that I actually wasted a little bit of ink on this next one and it was because I just re-inked the pad but I didn't have a finger dauber in my hand so I tried to get as much as I could up with my pom-pom and then I just wiped up the rest. Here I'm pulling off a little piece of paper that didn't quite cut off all the way and I just use a f my fine point tweezers to do so. So after I go around all the edges I put it in a bucket that's actually a little bit above where I'm working in my workspace. That way I don't lose my pieces of paper because I've done that more times than I can count. And then I find them after I've already recut them and re-inked them. And I just found that just a little container. It doesn't matter. Um, Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Dollar Tree. Yeah, it's a Dollar Tree. They have the cutest little wooden boxes and I actually painted them. I will show you guys the boxes in one of the videos at some point when I do another inking video. So that red paper is Rouge by American Crafts and I used Peppermint Scrub by Catherine Puller to go around my edges. Now I'm using the color Sandcastle on 
caramel colored cardstock from American Crafts. All of my paper came from 12 by 12 cardstock shop. I like it because I can order them in singles if it's a color that I don't use often or in packs of 25 and some come in 60 like your white, your black, etc. But I love the paper packs as well that are colored, multicolored. Now the reason I don't use a finger dauber on Franklin is because or my bigger pieces, the kids, whatever the main focal character of my sets are, is because there's more of the kids or the bears, the skunks, whatever you're working on, and the accessories are always smaller. So with the quantity of the bears in this file that come with it, I use the bigger dauber just to cover a larger area and I go around it several times sometimes, depending on how dark I want it but it does lighten as i said when it dries so you'll see a pause in the video when i come back to actually start gluing it it's because i let all the pieces dry probably for about 30 minutes just to make sure that they're all my desired darkness and i pre-draw on the eyes and the eyelashes just because everybody does them differently and they are time consuming so i do that just to kind of save time on the video so now that they're all dry, as I said, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the bigger pumpkin. And the base is the largest part. There's three pieces to this pumpkin and Franklin sits on this bigger one. So after I get the middle part down, and this is, see how the edges are all hidden that we didn't ink? Now I'm gonna put the middle piece down and I use a bone folder that's actually a vinyl squeegee um, to go ahead and evenly distribute the glue. Here I was deciding if I wanted to go behind the pumpkin or in front of the pumpkin and I went with in front of the pumpkin. Now I am using a lot more glue for gluing him to the front to make sure he stays. So here I normally start with the legs, the feet, the ears, the body, the head, but because his leg should be done last and you'll see what I almost did here in a moment, I'm going to start with his ears and his ear pads. The larger ear goes on the left, the smaller one on the right, his ear pads. I try to get it where they're overlapping where the round of his head is just a little bit so that way the head covers it, but you can place them in further if you like or farther out. It's up to you. Now, I caught myself what I almost did there. His leg goes on top of the body. So after the ears, you're going to glue the body and then the leg. Because he's supposed to be sitting on the pumpkin. I don't know how I almost made that mistake because before I even started gluing it, I said, oh, let me ink the top part of this leg, which I normally never have to do because he's sitting on the pumpkin. But it didn't go down, so it was an easy fix. This is the pumpkin he's holding. I chose this one. There is another one that comes with it, but I like just the shape of this one a little bit more. So I went ahead and gave him the fatter, shorter one to hold. Now I'm just putting the stem behind it, and that was the color chocolate with the over coffee ink that I went around. And here's his little foot. Now I do add highlights to the middle of his foot just to kind of make it stand out a little more. So I've cut down the amount of glue that I use on all my pieces, but I do put a lot more on the head just to make sure that every part of it is covered so none of it lifts. After I get that even with the base, I'm gonna put on his muzzle. And this is the same thing as the head, just because the corner of the eyes, it does rest over it and it's not flesh with his face. I want to make sure that it's completely covered. And then I put on his nose. I do tuck my tweezers underneath his muzzle though to push his nose down. That way I don't cause it to sink. One of his arms gets glued behind his body because that's going to be the one holding the pumpkin. And I'm just going to do half of the pumpkin and then I realize that I need to do the bottom because that part sticks to the um, base of the bigger pumpkin. I didn't flip it over several times to be precise with my glue, but I had an idea of where the piece goes. And now the other one is going to go over and hold the pumpkin. 
Now here's where the acetate comes in. I use acetate to draw my muzzle line just because my hands do have tremors from my surgery. And it allows me to have an even line going down instead of a shaky one. Now I just took my white gel pen and I went around his ear pads. You don't have to do any of this. This is just for reference. And I put the white spot on his nose, just where the reflection of a light would be. Now the white chalk up there is pan pastel. I get that from Amazon. And I seen other people using it and how bright it is compared to regular white chalk, like the ones from Stamping Up or that you can get from Hobby Lobby. This one hands down is great and that one single disc of titanium white has lasted me almost a year and I barely made a dent in it because you use so little. That tool is actually in one of my videos on my Facebook page, Paper Pieces and Leftovers. It's just a makeup brush. Now I got these little Prima flowers from the Paper Studio Why they were half off from Hobby Lobby and here's the complete piece. Thank you for following. Have a good day.